College Coach Now is America's number one coach mentoring program. This is your host, Randy Brown, and our goal at CCN is to put in front of our coaches America's best guests, coaches, NBA personnel possible. In this recording, you're going to hear former Arizona assistant and current Memphis head coach Josh Passner pass on great advice to the coaches listening in on College Coach Now. Listen and learn and come and join College Coach Now yourself and get on your path to NCAA college basketball. So, um, there's some truth to that. And, uh, and I'm going to, uh, I'll, I'll embellish on that, on that later. Um, Josh Pastner. Josh Pastner, Pastner is in the house. Josh, RB, welcome to the call, man. You are on time, and you are on the stage right now, man. Thanks for calling. Hey, RB, thanks, man. I appreciate it. And uh, do you want me to just kind of talk, just kind of talk, or what do you want to yeah. I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what I'd love to have you do, guys. This is Josh Pastner. Uh, Josh is going to explain his background to you. Um, you will not find a guy with, and I mean this, and I've worked for Kevin O'Neill, and I've, hey, Josh knows my background. Um, y- you will not run into a guy that is more uh, behind his word. Uh, you will not run into a guy who, who, you know, everybody says they work hard, but this cat works as hard as any of them uh, and as loyal as the day is long. And I, I just love this guy, and, and I, I've known him a while, and, uh, we, we both are former Arizona Wildcats because he just took a job at at uh, really one of the one of the great places in the country for uh, for Coach Del Perry in Memphis. So, Josh, if you could share with these guys um, how you got involved in basketball, maybe what some of your goals were, and go through each of your steps up until today, and um, that'll probably spur some questions, and and uh, we'll just take it from there. Okay, sounds good, RB. Um... Uh, and again, guys, if I break in and out a little bit, I'm just on a cell phone, but I should be okay. I'm in a good area right now. But anyway, uh, uh, I remember back when I was in fourth grade, uh, believe it or not, and I remember watching the Celtics-Lakers game, and I was saying to myself, I want to play in the NBA, but if I can't play in the NBA, I've got to find a way to stay involved in the game. And I knew that the next best thing to playing was coaching. And I know it sounds a little bit awkward and corny, but since that time, I can remember in fourth grade, I really put a lot of efforts into almost studying the game and really picking and picking people's brains and doing the best I could to prepare myself to be a coach. Now, I still did all the work as hard as I can to try to maximize my abilities, and the reason I didn't play in the NBA, I, put, I 100% blame it on my parents because they gave me no athletic ability. <laughs> so, uh, so I I I, I, did, I couldn't jump, nor I could nor could I defend. So, uh, but. But anyway, uh, so I really put my, my efforts and my energies towards that, fellas. And um, what I did actually in high school, uh, believe it or not, is I uh, sent a handwritten personal letter to every single Division One, Division Two. And let me before I even get to that, let me back it up. I used to, I used to coach an AAU team when I was 15, 16, 17 years old. I was coaching the Houston Hoops. My father had started the program and to actually just be around – me, his son, a little more than, than, than he would, and, and he wanted to just try to get something going. And, and I actually took over the program as 15, 16, 17-year-old uh, young guy, and I was doing all the travel and everything else. And that was really big for me because I really got to meet a lot of coaches. Coaches got to see me conduct practices with kids older than me. Um, I got to make substitutions. I was a head coach. Yes, it wasn't high school or college or but it was still you're you're dealing with with you're dealing with the team you're dealing with the um, the administrative side of it and then you're also dealing with the substitution and the X's and O's the timeout strategy all that stuff and uh, so um, so I did that in high school and I actually had my own scouting service called Josh Passer Scouting Service so when I would go to the AAU events I would actually have my own scouting service go around to watch every single game and send out a scouting service to about 120 schools. Obviously, you know, free of charge, in charge of time, but just got my name out there. And I, and I had to remember a lot of college coaches would actually call me back and say, hey, we want to order your service. And I would just say, hey, man, I'm just six, 15 years old. You can have So I really did it just for to get my name out there. But my senior year of high school, 
I sent a, a handwritten uh, personal letter to every single Division One, Division Two, II, Division Three, NAIA Division One, and NAIA Division Two uh, school in America, personal, handwritten. And I did it uh, um, in, a, in a sense of, hey, I want to have a chance to, to get on your team. I want to play college basketball. I want to be a coach. I'm going to be a positive influence. I can work guys out all the time. There's no rules or restrictions since I'm a player. I can be in the film room. I can do anything extra. And probably pretty much the main school that responded to me was Arizona. And I and uh, thank God that Coach Olson actually thought outside the box, believe it or not, and mm. really felt that, hey, this is a pretty good deal. Um, here's this young guy. I can bring him in. He can work guys out. He can do everything that coaches are allowed to do. Plus, he wants to be a coach, and there's no time or rule restrictions or days of the week restrictions. And, uh, and it was unbelievable. In my freshman year, I remember I was working out. Uh, I was all the time working with Bibby and, and uh, um, Michael Dickerson, Miles Simon, Jason Terry. And, you know, I was fortunate enough, very, very fortunate enough that I was on the team that, that won the national championship in 1997. And uh, I stayed on there. And then when, when my time was done, I actually got my degree in two and a half years. Uh, no units coming in. No summer school units. I took uh, 45 hours my freshman year, 42 hours my sophomore year. That gave me 87. You need 120 to graduate. I took all 33 hours, 11 classes, 8 to 1 every day. My first semester of my junior year, that gave me my bachelor's degree. And then I took 18 hours of master works, master's work in my uh, spring semester of my junior year. And then in the fall semester of my senior year of eligibility, I did 15 hours of master's work plus a thesis which gave me my master's, and then my eighth semester, my final semester of eligibility, I did 18 hours of Ph.D. work. So I really was – and what I did it for, you know, did I sacrifice some opportunities to go out and hang out? Absolutely, but I really did it for – to have to say that I got my bachelor's and my master's in three and a half years that I thought, again, when I was trying to be a head coach, I thought it would look very impressive to a president of a university or a board of regents saying – you know, I do. I'm serious about academics because at the time I really believed that uh, more as we got into the future, academics were going to be so important in everything, and that was going to be a big key. And as we can tell now, especially with Dr. Miles Brand and President, I mean, yes, winning and get you know, but academics are are as vital now than than ever. So I did that. Once I finished playing, I I, um, I actually. Was uh, I, mean, I will I want to throw this in here. I got to put my pat myself on the back on this one. I was 42 and 0 as a player at Arizona, but I only got in games that we were 30 and up. So uh, I was I was I was always in games that everyone wanted to pass in their game because that means we were going to be winning by 25. But anyway, so I stayed on as like a graduate assistant, then I moved into like administrative assistant, the video coordinator. I mean, I was just doing all these you know the, those crazy jobs, but I stayed on staff, fortunately for coach because. He let me do it. I wanted to stay on figuring that I'm just going to make myself so valuable that when there's a chance for an opening of one of the full assistants, that I'm going to try to make myself so valuable to coach that he's going to have to hire me from within. And God forbid, you know, or God thanks, thank God so much for that. Uh, uh, Jay John had actually, Jay John, um, who, was a, who was a very, very good coach, got the head job at Oregon State. Um, from Arizona, and when that happened, that opened up an opportunity for for coach to move somebody up or bring someone from the outside. And he came right in my office and just says, "You want the job?" And I says, "When do I start?" And then from there, I've been a full assistant for six years. And um, after that, I've had an opportunity, some other opportunities here and there. But uh, you know, with Coach Calipari here to go uh, to Memphis um, was good. And now I have a chance to have Lou Olson you know, Kevin O'Neill for, for a year and now Coach Cal for, for, for however long to, to have on my resume and hopefully that will eventually lead me to a to a head job. And you know what? People always ask me, man, are you going to get a head Let me tell you something. It is hard to get head jobs. It is extremely hard. You, It's so competitive. It's so tough. And I tell people, I don't know if I'm going to get one. I mean, I hope I get one. I would love an opportunity to run my own program, but I might not get a chance until I'm 45, 50. I might not ever get I don't know. And the thing is, there's so many good coaches out there, so many good recruiters, so many good people that there is high-level competition. So um, it is hard. It's, it's, a, it's a very, very tough profession, and that is why you just have to work your butt off, do things the right way, stay on the straight and narrow path, 
And you know what? In the end of the day, if something doesn't happen and he doesn't get your, your break, as long as you know you can go to sleep at night with a peace of mind, knowing that you've done all you could as a human being and as a coach to be the best you could that day, the rest is the rest is history. The rest is gravy. It means nothing. So that's the kind of attitude that I've taken, and uh, I guess from there I'll open up to any questions. Yeah. Yeah. Josh, that's, that, that, that's such a great uh, story. You know, what, what I really talk to these guys about is, you know, every path is unique. I you know, and you would, I know you would verify this. You can take 100 coaches, and we all got a different way that we went about it. And so I encourage these guys uh, that, that there is no wrong way to go about it. There's no wrong entry-level position. Somewhere along the line, you have to get experience. And, you, you know, you're on with about nine guys that, that I really feel confident, Josh, that, you know, someday we'll be sitting in that gym with you recruiting and, and say, hey, I was on a call uh, back in uh, 2008, and and you know, and I really think that'll happen for these guys. But I really appreciate your uh, uh, your description of you know what you had to do, and and uh, your path is so unique. But all, all of ours are. Well, and uh, in fact, yeah, we just got a we just got a young guy that got a job. Uh, you know, here this this last week, so we're excited for him. But uh, well, RB, uh, RB, the other the the other thing is is uh, you're absolutely right. I mean. For, for all the guys that are listening, I mean, there is no exact answer. I mean, I'll, I'll give you a prime example. Um, you look at a guy like uh, 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 Trent Johnson, who just got the LSU job. You know, he was on a sta- he was on the staff at Washington. That unfortunately, when he was there, had, had they had gotten removed and the, the staff had got fired, and he bounced around. Gets the Nevada job, Stanford job, and now LSU. You know, I mean, look at the guy at Butler. You know, I mean, he right. before he got a full assistant, he wasn't even in basketball. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was, you know, he was doing sales outside. So there's no, there's no right or wrong answer. There, you, the bottom line is you just got to get in. It's so hard to get in, but once you break it and you get in, then you make the most. But, um, but you're right, RB. It's just, it's just more of a time of, of there's, there's different ways to do it, and and you just got to keep working hard. There's a lot more no's are told to you than yeses. But you've got to keep your head up, stay positive, and know that you're going to get your break. And that's what I'm saying. Do it the right way. I'm a big believer. Good things happen to good people. Yeah. Uh, good karma follows you. There's no question about yeah. it. That's great advice. Guys, questions for Josh? Uh, hey, Coach. This is uh, Brian Woodhurst. We talked uh, real quick last weekend. And uh, hey, Brian, what's up, bud? How you doing? Doing good. And um, I was just kind of curious, Do you, is there like a little support group you have, maybe with some other assistant coaches you've come up with? the ladder with, you know, where you guys kind of talk about, you know, your future or different advice you guys give each other or not? Well, you know what, Brian, what I do, and you, and you could even vouch for this, if anyone sends me an email, a text message, a phone call, um, a letter, I respond to everybody. Every single thing I try to respond. And, and I do that because I know um, when I was, uh, uh, you know, sending out letters and I always didn't get responses, I, I just think it takes a minute or two to respond back and do this or that. So I just think it's the right thing to do. So it's not as much as, as an individual uh, or, or two or three guys I saw came up with. It's more of just meeting people like you and I, Brian. Hey, man, you sent me a letter. I called you back. We've got a relationship now. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll be running into each other for, forever. So uh, I'm just that type of guy that's just, hey, you meet somebody, you keep relationships, you keep good, and, and you go from there. Okay. And I got one more, if, if you don't mind. It's uh. I've seen you do a lot of community work, and uh, did uh, you have to ask like Coach Olson, you know, for permission, or did you have to work something out regarding your basketball and then your community work? Well, I, I was very fortunate being at Arizona and Tucson, where basketball is such an elite thing here, and it's the biggest game in town. You're like a, uh, you know, it's like the uh, it's like the pro team. So you know, you have a lot of people's eyes and ears, and you're able to make a difference. But um, Coach Olson was very wanted the people, wanted his, you know, wanted his staff and his players to be in the community because obviously it's a reflection to the program. So I think whether you're at any program, I think it's important to get your people, you might say your people, your staff or your players or as much involved in the community representing the program, doing things right because it, it's, it, it, it look, it's good for the program. It's good. It's just a good deal to, to get be involved with the community, and that way the community feels that they're part of the team as well too. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome, Brian. Yep. Questions out there? 
Uh, is this Brian Kelly? Um, I got a question about skill development. I'm trying to establish myself as a guy that can make any kind of player better, um, make a bad player good, make a good player great, make a great player a superstar. I know you have that reputation, so um, how exactly did you go about it? Uh, Brian, thank, that's a good question. You know, I, I'm a big believer in this. There are every, there's a lot of good coaches, Brian. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm a, I imagine you know a lot of basketball. You probably know way, a lot more than, than I do. Um, I think there's a lot of drills. There's a lot of knowledge. There's a lot. It boils down to being fundamentally sound, guys playing hard, and doing things right. I'm a big. You can come up with a million drills. You can do this. But when you're working out, if you keep it simple, the guys that you, when you're working people out or getting guys better on skill development, it's not – you don't need to over overcoach yourself or, or overcoach – or, or over-strategize because what happens is you too much information means slower on the feed or, or, or they're not going to be as, as good as they need to be. So give them a basic point or two. Come up with any drill that's a game-like situation – but the most important thing is they got to be doing the fundament, being fundamentally sound. They've obviously, when they're working, it's got to be sound, and they are working hard, game like speed. And thirdly, as a coach, I think is the most important thing is you can, as especially when you're in individual workouts, is you cannot allow slip. If someone's doing it wrong, make them do it right. And if they, and if, they uh, if they're uh, testing you and not, and they're, you know. They can do it right, and if they don't want to deal with it, they, you just keep making them do it right, and that's the only way to get guys better. If you let a slip it, or if a guy travels, makes a great shot, and you don't say anything, you let it go, it, it ends up catching the guy, the kid later on. So uh, the key for in my belief is no slippage by the coach by allowing the player to have any slippage. Can I do a follow-up question to that? Yeah, go ahead, Bert. Okay, I'm a, I'm a guy that um. You know, I was never a great um, athlete myself, and you had said that you had um, you blame your parents for not making you athlete. Right. But, um, how do you like? How do you teach kids that have all the talent when you know you yourself didn't like? How do you you know? You know um, what? Um, over that. That's a good. That's a good question, Brian. And the thing is, two things. One is is. Kids are going to respond if you if you're going to work hard for them. Now you might have, might take a little bit to earn respect, but if you're if you're working and you're staying after them and they know that you know your stuff, you're going to get the respect 100. percent And you've got to and, and again, if kids or players want to get better, they want to improve, they want to be pushed, they want discipline, they want structure, but coaches have to give it to them. They have they're looking for that the player, so the coaches have to give it to them. So you can earn the respect, Brian, by just working these guys out, not allowing slippage. and But if you genuinely care, which I know that you do, you, these guys are going to respond to you. And it's, if, they're, if they're seeing that you care enough that you want to – you're pushing them, you want to make them the very best they can be, whether you played in the NBA or in the Hall of Fame or, or you were the towel guy at, at Timbuktu and had no chance to play, it's all the same. I mean, there's a lot of coaches now these days that never play. It's it's really overrated now to play or not to play. It's about getting the job done. It's about being able to communicate, being a people's guy, uh, being able to coach, being able to recruit, being able to be the total pack, being able to be an executive. I think that's more than anything. It's not about playing. It's about are you can you be an executive? Can you run an, an organization? And that's what ads and, and these presidents are looking for. Coach, uh, tell us what was your mindset? your thought process uh, when you found out that you were not going to be able to return to Arizona and then the process leading to you taking a job in Memphis? Well, the, me, well, the thing with Arizona is, is Coach Olson and Jim Living, their athletic director, uh, did not want me to leave whatsoever. I mean, they did all they could to keep me here. I mean, they really took care of me financially and everything else. But uh, when Coach Cal called from Memphis, I had, you know, again, I've had some other offers from other schools, but I didn't, um, I, I didn't pursue it. So this one, though, I felt really, I thought the timing was right because I thought that having, you know, Coach Olson and Coach Cal, uh, you know, on my resume would be just extremely powerful. And obviously I was under Kevin O'Neill last year for a year. So um, having, you know, those guys on my resume is, is really big. But Mr. Livingood and Coach Olson did not want me to leave, but I was so thankful that that 
that I got their blessing and, and that they said, you know what, if this is the best for Josh, we're going to back you. We're going to give you our, our blessing to do this if this is what you really want. And this is what I wanted. And um, so I'm, you know, uh, you know, I left here on really good terms. Who knows? I want to maybe, I, I mean, obviously a dream job would be able to come back to Arizona one day. I mean, that's my alma mater. So that would be an unbelievable deal. But um, so that's why it's important I left on a good note, on a high note. And, um, um, but, you know, thankfully for Coach Olson and Mr. Livingood, they gave me their blessing and um, they supported me 100%. This is Mark Owens here. Uh, congratulations uh, on, on your, your new position. Thank you. Um, what would you say as a young assistant uh, in any type of college program, you talked about making yourself valuable, uh, you know, as valuable as possible. Um, for a young guy getting started out uh, on a college staff, um, how, what are some things uh, that you would recommend or what are some things out there that you can do uh, some of the, I guess, some of the little things to make yourself valuable to a program. Remember this: every head coach, his, he wants to win, and when he hires people, he's looking for people that can help him win. Period. So you, I, 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 that there's not a direct answer. It, mm -hmm. it, the direct answer is you've got to. What can you help that person win? Is it is it uh, coaching? Is it recruiting? Is it um, player development is it academic i mean there you is it the whole is it four different things there, you have to find ways where you can help him win you can make his job easier you can you can do things that are going to put wins on his record and whatever that is and that's the talk when you're talking to coaches that should be the talk you're talking about hey i mean everyone works hard guy but what you to separate yourself what can you do to help somebody win you know if it's just if, you, if you're just going to say i'm going to work hard i'm going to spend a lot of hours well if I was a head coach, yeah, you're going, to spend, you're going to be there from 6 in the morning to midnight, but that doesn't guarantee me you're going to help me win. And how are you going to help me win? What, what are you going to do to help me win? Where do you separate yourself and that you're going to help you know, our program separate ourselves for us to win our conference, to us to get to the tournament, to have a chance to get to the Final Four? That's where you've got to really start. And the, and the words that you use is how can you help people win? Hey, Coach, what is outside of the box ways of thinking that you've seen guys build relationships to get into a graduate assistant position or a, a video coordinator position? Because we talk on here, we talk about a lot about the video coordinator position, but just because I know how to how to do the video and things of that nature, I still have to build a relationship and, and make the contact to get into the position. Well, um, I'll be that. That you know, uh, those positions. First of all, like the GA position or the video coordinator, administrative assistant, DOB. I mean, those are good spots because they get you in. It, usually, what happens a lot of times is two things. One, like I was saying earlier, you've got to make yourself so valuable that they don't want to lose you. They don't want to lose you. The other thing is a lot of times you've got those program programs. Assistant coaches end up getting head jobs. And again, you want to make yourself so valuable to that assistant coach that you have an opportunity to 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 go with him to to a uh, a school as a full assistant. So, you know, um, again, there's like you said earlier in the in the conference call, RB about uh, you know there's no right or wrong. There's different paths. There's really different ways to get in, to get in. You just got to separate yourself by making yourself so valuable that if you left, it'd be like, oh my gosh, we cannot lose this guy. And all that's going to do is help give you strong recommendations from the head coach to other people, other assistants, when they get the head jobs, they're going to be called. So you just got to make sure you're making yourself so valuable. And again, that doesn't mean you have to be in the office from five in the morning to, to midnight. I mean, that, that means it's about being valuable and helping people win, helping people doing the best job you can be, being a good guy, doing it the right way, being straight, caring, helping the players, helping the players. When I say help the players, getting the players better. Uh, putting the players first. That's that's a big thing. Always got to put the players first. Thanks. How about uh, one more question, guys? Yeah, Josh. Uh, hey, I got one for you. My name is uh, Tyler Irwin. I'm a Division Three assistant out here in uh, Simpson College and uh, close to Des Moines, Iowa. Um, 
just from a uh, Division One assistant, uh, one of my goals is to make uh, to make the move up up the ranks and try to get into Division One. Uh, for me, being in Division Three, uh, any advice from you uh, to help me or to help kind of make the the jump up a couple divisions to Division One? Any advice that you would give to me on things to do or things not to do? Well, I think, you know, I think um, one is, is you probably need to get, you know, get in with some people who are at the D1 level or who know people who can help you get in, uh, whether that's through just networking, picking up the phone, yeah. calling people, emailing, um, camps, uh, you know, going to the Final Four is a heck of a network opportunity, as you can imagine. I'm sure you've been and you know that. Uh, but, you know, it, it, it's 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 a thing of, to kind of get your foot in the door sometimes, again, it's, it's sometimes it's who you know and, and having a contact, having a relationship, just like I was saying about with Brian earlier. I mean, he sends me a letter. I call him back. We stay in touch. He worked for Brian one day. So it's it's one of those deals where um, I just think a lot of it to get your foot in the door is based on relationships or somebody, let's say, let's say I'm a head coach and you, and you're trying to, be on my staff. Well, if you just call me cold turkey, you know I'm going to listen because I want to hear and you and all your good things. But let's say uh, you know Ben Howland and Ben calls me up and says, Josh, you know, do 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 do, do this guy is the best. He's unbelievable. He be, he can help you to, you know. So if, if you have if so if there's an opening somewhere and you can kind of get in with somebody or know their trusted person who they really listen to, which is a way to get in. Um, is probably the best way to do it. But, again, there's no really right or wrong answer on that. Sometimes hard work or being the best coach is not always what it's about because it's a lot of times guys are getting jobs and um, just because of who you know or relationships or this or that. So that's more than anything, I think, in this profession, especially as we've gone further into the future here. Thanks, Josh. Appreciate it. Yep, you're welcome. Good luck. With Josh, Josh RB, again, it's, it's really going to be fun to follow your progress and uh, – you know, really wish you the best. Are you uh, are you still in Tucson, or have you? You said you were packing the other day. I'm packing. I'm still in Tucson right now. I mean, I'm scared. I'm scared to leave this beautiful weather. So I told I told Coach Cal if I get there, I'm bringing the sun with me. But uh, I'm originally from Houston, Texas, so I'm yep. used to the humidity. So I'm I'll fit in there well. But uh, yeah. anytime RBI, anything I can ever do for the young guys or for coaches, you know, I'm a young guy myself. I'm 30, so I uh, and and. And one thing, RB, and for the guys out there, I'm a no ego, no maintenance type of guy. I I am very I, I I've been I mean I've just been very lucky that I got to have a chance to walk on in Arizona and, and move my way up. And I skipped a couple steps. I'm aware of that, so I'm very lucky. And um, but but like I said, guys, if there's anything for for coaches or for young guys, man, I'm at the time and I'll be able to help out. Right. Well, listen, uh, best of luck in the new job. I, I know I'll be in touch with you, and you probably don't have a new contact email out there yet, do you? I don't, but just, you know what, I'm going to have my email forwarded in my email over there when I okay. get to Memphis one. So just send me to what I have at Arizona, and then whenever I get my new one, it will get to me over there, and I'll let you know I have yeah. a new one. Can you just list that for the guys? Uh, because yeah. I really I really think that one of the reasons this program is is – is so good is because these guys can get on this program and all of a sudden they're going to – Donnie Tyndall just jumped in uh, right behind you, and they get a chance to meet you guys and, and can really start to build those relationships. So if you yeah, can do that, uh, that would be great. Yeah, it's J Pastner, J-P-A-S-T-N-E-R, at Arizona, spelled out A-R-I-Z-O-N-A, dot E-D-U. And if somehow you can't find it or something or you – just go on the website, or you can call our office and get it. But uh, I'm, I'm easily, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, one, I'm as easy, the most accessible coach you can ever imagine. And if you don't get a response from me, that means I didn't get your email, or I didn't get your text message, or I didn't get your message. So you, ha if, I promise you, if you didn't re get a response from me, it's because I didn't get you sending me something. So if you don't get something within the 24, 48 hours, make sure you resend it. Josh, thanks for your time. Best of luck, and I look forward to uh, to visiting with. You.